Hello, and welcome to the first edition of the Area One Fish of the Week. Uh, my name is Kel Jackson. I'm a senior product manager here at Area One. And in this segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive um, into a particular fish um, and taking a look at particularly some of the technical aspects of it, some interesting things that make it unique, as well as you know, why this particular fish might be uh, missed by traditional sources and could be a source of problem for organizations. So I'm very excited to start this brand new um, session and uh, dive in with this week's fish uh, and to start uh, going into a little bit more detail into some of the things that Area 1 is seeing out in, out in the world and, and making detections on. Great. Well, this week we're going to be looking at a, uh, the fish that we see here. Um, so you can see here uh, you know, some snippets of the email that went out. Uh, long story short, um, this email address actually came from a legitimate um, uh, EDU uh, domain. It actually came from a profess professor at a, a quite large uh, institution and went out um, advertising something around uh, invoices and credits and payments and with a link to download or, or view a file that kind of uh, promises to link to that uh, particular invoice. If a user actually had clicked on that uh, show file download, they would actually be taken to a page that looks like an Office 365 login page, as you can see in that bottom right corner, but actually was a credential harvester. So a pretty, um, I wouldn't say standard, but a pretty common credential harvester attack. Um, but the thing that makes this unique is this is coming from a legitimate uh, sender, a legitimate .edu address, and a, and a real professor. If you were to, to Google this person's name, you'd find their department, and and uh, uh, all the information around them. Obviously, we had to uh, hide, out, hide those details uh, for that person's privacy. Uh, but it was a legitimate um, email address that was compromised and then used uh, in order to uh, crack this particular fish. So, um, oh, a little too far forward. Here we go. So what we have here is uh, some headers from uh, that particular email fish. So the reason why I wanted to show this is to give you uh, an example from one particular email that we saw. We see that it went from a legitimate uh, domain, that edu domain, out from there. We tracked kind of looking at the headers out into the world and into some organizations where in one instance it went to, you know, to Mimecast scans, and in another instance it went out to um, Ironport. So I bring this to say, you know, this particular fish, you know, Area 1 was making these detections after these other secure Internet gateways. So, um, and as, this, as we'll get to in just a few moments, because this is coming from a legitimate sender right from their, um, right from their uh, servers, um, you know, being a big university.edu address, um, it's going to pass all of the standard SPF checks, um, all of the DKIM, DMARC authentication checks that you'd expect for an email, a valid email to come through. So uh, because of that, because of the, sort of the nature of the craft of the attack and legitimate sender, you know, it's being missed by some prominent secure internet gateway providers, uh, reason being because it looks really legitimate from a sender perspective, from the uh, protocol and authentication perspective, um, and all the details there, and just contains really, really a small amount of information within the text of the uh, email itself. So I'm going to go here, and, and, and what's also interesting about this target, um, excuse me, about this particular fish, is that the whoever crafted it and compromised this domain was was pretty pretty thrifty. They only sent uh, about one email per organization. We have a couple examples of organizations that they went and looked at, you know, from an international airline to a law firm to a large insurance firm, and they were really targeted in terms of who they reached out to each of these different um, firms. They Look for you know the director of finance, uh, a billing analyst, a pay payments rep, and only sent it to that one person within each organization. So while they may have reutilized parts of their infrastructure in terms of this credential harvester website, they were really targeted within each organization. So that standard you know spam filtering or signature based detections are going to be kind of weak to be able to detect this because it's really really targeted and and in each email was. They actually had a couple of different email addresses that they um, were able to compromise, and so they actually used different email addresses for some of these different 
organizations, and they were really, really targeted of only using one per. So it was actually kind of hard for traditional um, secure Internet gateway providers to be able to make this detection. So to give you an ex a quick example of that, of that email flow, we can see that here. You know, it's going from a legitimate sender through a secure Internet gateway, and that's ultimately where, uh, after that step, is where Area 1 was able to view the email and then be, uh, be able to make a detection. So to give a little bit more detail into how Area 1 was able to catch the fish, it comes down to Area 1's constantly crawling the web um, out in the world today, both um, proactively um, out in the world. We're constantly looking out and seeing what infrastructure is being spun up, what's happening at, um, you know, that could be used in the future to be part of a phishing campaign, what are previous uh, fishers doing today? You know, are they buying more domains? Are they setting up new websites, um, more infrastructure, et cetera? And that's enabling us to use that information to also uh, take a look and crawl uh, domains and websites and links as they come in through the inbox and before they, excuse me, before they would even come into the inbox as they come into our, um, our purview for us to be able to scan them and, and detect them. So ultimately, you know, in this particular instance, we had a machine learning model that was able to see, okay, if we look at this website that was in this link, um, obviously we see something that looks like a, a credential harvester because it's quoting, it's using Microsoft logos, it's asking for a username and password, and it clearly, if we look at that URL, is, is not a Microsoft domain. Uh, but even if it was something that looks similar to the human eye as a Microsoft domain, it would be a little bit easier for a human to tell the difference uh, excuse me, for to fall prey for, you know, maybe they changed an M to be a Cyrillic character or, you know, put a 1 instead of an I or, or something like that into a registered domain, then it would o only uh, trigger an additional, um, we would also be, everyone would be looking for that as well, and that would be a similar domain. So, in, in, in fact, it would, it would have only triggered an additional hit uh, for us and in, into what we're doing. So, um, it's, it, using these sort of proactive crawling as well as sort of our machine learning, we're able to sort of do a lot of proactive discovery and detections on these to be able to identify fish just like this. And in fact, you know, as attackers try and be more clever and more targeted, it, it, it sometimes only helps us to be able to make these determinations. And so, um, as I kind of alluded to before, you know, to why others are missing it, you know, this was a really, really narrow, crafted, almost um, zero-day attack, uh, so to speak, in terms of each time they sent out an email, it was unique. It was one per organization. They used a variety of different compromised email addresses, and they were sending this using legitimate means. You know, this is coming from a big university, you know, probably a, a university that would work with a big insurance company or would work with a big law firm. So it's, you know, it would look like a legitimate sender. It's, it's coming from an organization that, that a secure and a gateway would potentially trust. Um, and, and this is why, you know, even with, you know, using all of the standards of email that you would expect, a lot of times fishers are clever, um, and attackers are clever, and they're going to either set up a, they're going to either uh, set up a, their own uh, server domain and send email using all of these authentication standards, or they're going to do something like, you know, set up a Yahoo or a Gmail domain that's obviously going to, or excuse me, email address, which is obviously going to, pass all those authentication checks, or even in the case here, we see a compromised domain, you know, these are the type of things that are not going to be triggering those um, email authentication red flags and are oftentimes going to be missed. And so it really takes a proactive crawling of the Internet. It takes a really crap to, um, intelligent machine learning and processing um, situation to be able to actually understand the contents of what's in an email what is that email saying? Where is it directing to in the web? Is it part of that attacker infrastructure? Is it being used by what area one is seeing every day? And it takes that holistic intelligence, taken together to really understand and, and be able to in what you know, averages out to a few seconds, you know, less than two seconds per email, to quickly render a verdict and understand in this particular case with ease uh, that this was a fish attack regardless of a small volume and a really, really targeted attack. And Ultimately, this is one particular example that we've, that we've seen recently, um, but shows you know, what Area 1 is doing all the time. We're, for each email that we're seeing out in the world, we're really taking and we're scanning it. We're you know, seeing what that email is doing, who is it coming from, where in the world is it uh, coming from, 
who's the sender, does it make sense, is it passing um, security checks, but even if it is, you know, what is in the contents of that email, whether it's an attachment, a link, what is it trying to do, and what is the, even the, the nature of the, of the words uh, contained within the email. So it really takes that holistic approach and that data-minded approach that Area 1 is deploying all the time to help us catch you know, these kind of crafted attacks which are passing the traditional email protections that we see out in the world and really enables us to protect our customers and block these fish, which any one of which could cause a lot of damage if, for example, you know, one of the director of finance or accounts people, uh, people clicked the link, gave their credentials, and then potentially um, allow this attacker to, you know, have access to their internal system, wire money, et cetera, which really, really could be quite devastating for organization. Um, and we've uh, been able to protect that. Um, and this is the example of exactly the kind of protection and, and detection we make all the time. So with that, that's our fish of the week for this week. Uh, thank you for listening in and, and hearing a little bit more about one particular example for how Area 1 is able to make a detection out in the world. Um, in the future, we're going to be bringing more installments to show more examples for how Area 1 is, you know, what particular interesting fish we might see out in the world. I'm excited to dive into those and give you more um, examples and, and, and interesting things of fish that we're seeing out in the world today. So again, thank you for joining in and listening to the first Fish of the Week.